Just over three years, the Tesla Model 3 has become the best-selling battery electric vehicle of all time, with nearly 650,000 units on the road. That's more than the venerable Nissan Leaf, which is just about to hit its 10th anniversary. But Tesla doesn't rest on its laurels, and the Model 3 has already had a significant update, which is what we have here. Before I start telling you about the new Model 3 though, please don't forget, if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And now back to the new Model 3. Not much has obviously changed on the outside. The most notable update is the chrome delete on the window surrounds and door handles, with these matte black trims used instead. Some people will be pleased, but others still prefer the original chrome, which is a pretty standard design on lots of recent cars from every manufacturer. The side camera enclosures are also now black rather than chrome. The windows are double glazed, although you can't tell visibly. This will reduce interior road noise and maintain internal temperature with less power consumption. We have the standard range plus version here, but apart from different wheels and the carbon fiber spoiler on the performance, there's not a lot to distinguish the three different versions of the Model 3 externally. This car has the optional 19 inch sport wheels, which add 1,450 to the price over the standard 18 inch aero ones. You get the same wheel options with a long range. The performance still comes with just 20 inch wheels, but they've been changed to Uber turbines, which we don't like the look of so much, but they are allegedly more efficient. Tesla does sometimes change the paint choices with its updates, but you still get the same ones with the 2021 Model 3. White, as you see here, is the standard, and all the options except red cost £1,000 extra. These include black, grey and blue. Red is £2,000 extra. The headline feature of the new 3 is it now has a heat pump instead of a conventional heater. This was a feature on the Model Y from the start. This works like a reverse fridge, sucking warmth from the air around to heat the cabin and can be up to three times more efficient than an electrical heating element. Overall, it's a mild update to the exterior look, although the chrome delete will be very welcome for some. The Model 3 is still a bit generic looking, although it's very obviously a Tesla. The key design driver was aerodynamics, and this car has an incredibly low drag coefficient of 0.23, which is way lower than virtually any other car on the market. Unlocking and getting into a Tesla Model 3 isn't quite as slick as the more premium Teslas. As you can see, it didn't detect my presence. In fact, I have to do this and press this key card against the B-pillar. Now you can actually set up your phone or buy an extra key to do this um, in the normal kind of fashion. But actually, this is the kind of standard process. And then you have to pull out this handle, which is also not as slick as it could be. And then you can finally get in the car. If the Tesla Model 3's exterior changes are primarily cosmetic, the interior changes are mostly fairly skin deep too. The inside of the car is essentially the same minimalist experience, which some find refreshing and others feel has thrown the baby out with the bathwater. The key centre point of controversy is the fact that virtually everything is controlled via a central 15 inch touchscreen, but we'll get to that in a bit. Since our original review of the Model 3, Tesla started putting a wireless phone charger for two phones in the central console, and this is now fully integrated, where before it was more like a bundled accessory. The shiny piano black surfaces of the central console have been replaced in the 2021 edition with this matte black finish. The door for the cubby behind the charger slides open rather than flipping. But you still get two cup holders and an armrest with another cubby underneath. The seats look like leather, but they're actually a synthetic material that we like to call woke leather. The standard range plus only comes with this black trim called partial premium. This is the basic option for the dual motor cars too, but they also have a white option for an extra 1,000 pounds. Whichever trim you go for, the front seats are 12 way power adjustable and heated. They have a memory function, but it's complicated and you guessed it, controlled via the LCD panel. The seats are pretty comfortable on long journeys and you actually do get quite a bit of headroom which is accentuated by the fact that you have this recessed panoramic sunroof which we'll talk about a bit more later. The glove compartment is a bit hard to open at average size but there's now a USB type A port inside for you to plug in storage for the Tesla Sentry mode. The rear seats are comfortable and with the dual motor cars heated as well but the rear seat passengers don't have their own control over this function. There's also a decent amount of headroom in the back, but the knee room is a little bit more restricted. The middle seat is a lot thinner and really only there if you need a fifth passenger. However, if you only have four passengers, you can pull this down and you get an armrest with a couple of cup holders. 
There are separate air conditioning vents and a couple of USB-C ports for charging phones in the back. There's a tinted glass roof as standard across all cars. Overall, it's a minimalist but comfortable interior. So one of our criticisms, one of our few criticisms of the Model 3 was, and still is, that it isn't a hatchback, unlike the Polestar 2. However, they have made a change with this new version, and that is that the boot is powered. As you can see, it's a pretty big boot. This is 425 litres, and you even get a little bit extra in this really quite sizable cubby underneath the main floor. And unlike a lot of saloons, you can actually open the rear in this typical 60-40 arrangement. This opens up a capacious space of 1,140 litres, although this is not as large as some SUV-like EVs. So this is a huge boot for a saloon, and actually bigger than the Polestar 2s, but because you have this smaller opening to get to it, it's maybe that little bit less practical. For all you trailer owners out there, the Model 3 can also tow up to 1,000 kilograms. But again, unlike the Polestar 2, it's not quite as slick, because you have to actually you get this for your thousand pounds and you have to unscrew a panel on the bottom and install this manually rather than flipping it out with a single button press like the Polestar. And of course, just press this button and the trunk closes. There's still a small frunk, but it's actually smaller now because the heat pump is underneath there. Aside from the heat pump, or in fact because of it, the biggest revelation of all with the new Model 3s is the additional range. The standard range plus version that we have here has had its range extended from 254 miles to 267 miles. The long range goes to 360 miles and the performance has the biggest increase from 329 miles to 352 miles. There is some controversy about whether or not this is partly due to a bigger battery, but officially this car still has a 54 kilowatt hour battery and the other two cars 79.5 kilowatt hours. The Model 3 is also still one of the fastest cars to charge. If you can find a V3 supercharger, you can get over 200 kilowatt charging and even the cars with a larger battery will take around 20 minutes to get back to 80% capacity. You can get similar performance from Ionity's 350 kilowatt chargers. It's worth noting that Standard Range Plus doesn't support quite such fast DC charging, just 170 kilowatts, so it takes about the same time to get back to 80% on a V3 charger as the premium models. The onboard AC charger is 11 kilowatts, but assuming you only have 7 kilowatts at home, the dual motor cars take around 12 hours to charge and the standard range plus 7 hours. You can open the charging port from the LCD panel or the app, but not externally, which is a bit more fiddly than some EVs, but at least the port is nicely hidden when not in use. Getting the car started requires having this key card here near the cup holders, and then you press the brake and the car should automatically come on. Drive, reverse and park are selected with the right hand steering wheel stalk, a system shamelessly stolen from Mercedes. This stalk is also used for adaptive cruise control. You pull it down once more to enable that and then once more again to enable auto steer. The steering wheel itself is also exceptionally minimalist. You have these two dials and this one controls the volume and if you jog left and right you can change tracks. This one is all about the cruise control. You can control the speed of your cruise control with this wheel and then you jog left and right to change the, uh, the distance that you want to be from the car in front. The left hand stalk brings us to one of the features that annoys people about the Model 3. This is obviously the indicator and pressing the button on the end washes and wipes the screen. But if you want to manually control the wipers beyond this, you have to use the LCD panel. Another surprising omission is a dashboard display behind the steering wheel. It would have been nice to have at least a head-up display, although you get used to not having it. There are buttons for the electric windows and the doors, but that's pretty much it for discrete controls. One tiny improvement since the last car is they've added a little symbol to this button which opens a door to make it a bit more obvious what that does. The LCD panel is also where you control the air conditioning, making it a bit fiddly to operate when you're driving. This brings us to a feature that is literally central to the Model 3. This massive 15 inch landscape orientation LCD is the control hub of the entire car. There are definitely annoyances to having only this one giant iPad for pretty much every car function, but at least the menu is extremely well organized and logical. Most of the time when you're driving, it's a giant sat-nav map with simple text entry to find destinations. 
The right hand side shows car information with the all important current speed at the top. The remaining battery capacity and current time are a bit small and hard to see. This car image here gives access to things like opening the boot and the, uh, the front and the charging port and you can kind of go through here to see trip information and tyre information that's only active when you're driving. It's also worth noting that this display is particularly fascinating when you're driving because it actually shows where all the cars around you are in a kind of 3D image. You do have quick controls for all the key functions at the bottom like heated seats, demisting your front and rear um, windscreens and the air conditioning as I mentioned and the music and if you pop up here you can see things like the toy box fun stuff like you can um, make fart noises uh, with that one and um, entertainment you can download games there's a web browser but this car isn't connected at the moment so you can't see that um, you also get a theatre mode um, with the entertainment so if you do have a premium connection then you can watch Netflix it's worth noting that actually um, the Standard Plus only comes with 30 days of premium connection at the moment um, and the long range and performance have a full year. Now that does change, sometimes at the end of a, of a period Tesla will give like lifetime premium connected services but that's kind of a special deal just to shift cars that they occasionally do. The premium connectivity is worth having because it gives you things like satellite imagery on the, um, on the map here if you want it. You can have live streaming of um, music from Spotify, video streaming, you know, the lovely watching Netflix, um, and even the internet browser that we talked about. Now, this is the meat of the settings, and we think this is one of the best designed interfaces of any um, electric car we've reviewed. You get some quick controls for things like the, the mirrors and the lights, um, and you can lock and unlock and configure how the locks work. The display itself of, the, um, of this panel, Driving modes, you can see there's a chill and a standard mode um, and um, the standard mode is a lot faster on the uh, long range and uh, performance cars. Different steering modes, these are all the same. You can have, whether it stops with creep, roll or just hold. Um, and then trailer mode as well. Now, these are the controls for autopilot. Um, all cars have autopilot. Uh, this car ha happens to actually have full self-driving as well. Um, but as we'll explain, that's quite an expensive option. Configure navigation, safety and security. Um, you can't see anything here, but this car has a, um, a, a really good um, security system called Sentry Mode, um, stuff about servicing, and of course the all important software updates because Tesla is infamously updating its uh, software. There's been something like 90 different um, software updates to the Model 3 since it um, was launched. Believe it or not, this is actually the slowest Tesla currently on the market. But even this one, the standard range plus Model 3, takes 5.3 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. Now that's the kind of speed that would have been pretty impressive in a Porsche 911 20 odd years ago. So even the standard range plus model, the basic one, is a car that can compete with pretty much any car on the road off the lights. The dual motor cars are much faster still and are a bit quicker than the previous version. The long range now takes 4.2 seconds to hit 60 miles an hour, which is 0.2 seconds faster than it was. And the performance model now takes 3.1 seconds to get to 60 miles per hour, which is a huge 0.1 seconds faster to 60, which you know, the owners of the previous model are gonna be very upset that their cars are now that much slower. It's not just the sheer acceleration that the Tesla Model 3 is capable of, it's the immediacy with which it's delivered that makes this car so special to drive. The standard range plus is rear wheel drive only, so it's not quite as brutal as the other cars. But with the, the dual motor cars, you just flip the accelerator and it just shifts. Considering that these are still heavy cars, they handle extremely well too. The standard range plus is 1.7 tons, and the other two cars are 150 kilograms heavier than that. But they all corner amazingly well. They all, they all handle extremely well, but the dual motor cars, because they've got four wheel drive, give that little bit of extra confidence when you're accelerating out of a corner. The standard range plus also feels nimble, but with a little bit less need to slow down for corners and accelerate out of them. The end result is a car that's an absolute hoot on windy British A roads and an overtaking master. The immediate torque means that when you see an opportunity to overtake, you can act on it immediately. No need to get in the right place and make sure you're in the right gear ready. You just think and act straight away. The standard range plus is an enjoyable steer. 
but the performance model is one of the best driver's cars on the road, delivering gobsmacking thrills in abundance. The long range is only a bit slower. That brings us to the Model 3's safety features, and since I've already mentioned it, let's start with the adaptive cruise control. This is one of the most advanced systems on the market. Most people know that Tesla is right at the front of the game when it comes to self-driving, with a full trial taking place in America right at this moment. You can't use this facility in the UK yet, but you can use self-steering on motorways. Putting the drive stalk down once while in drive mode engages adaptive cruise control. And then you can use this wheel to improve the speed. Put it one more time and it enables auto steer. This is the feature of all Teslas. Once you get used to it, it makes driving in traffic much more comfortable. You can see it's actually steering and it's gone blue here to tell me to uh, get my hands on the wheel. You can see it's decelerating the car automatically as we drive along. The car steers for you, but you're not supposed to take your hands off the wheel. The system will nag you to give the wheel a little jiggle to show you that it's still away. NCAP didn't think the system was very effective. As a result, it gave Tesla a lower safety rating for its assisted driving system than other car makers. This is despite Tesla actually having more advanced capabilities. The Model 3, like other Teslas, is bristling with cameras and sensors pointing in every direction. As standard, this allows all cars to have automatic emergency braking. There's front and side collision warning as well as obstacle aware acceleration. There's also blind spot warning and lane departure avoidance. These systems aren't as intrusive as with some other cars. If you opt for the full self-driving capability, this is a £6,800 upgrade, but it's actually a software upgrade because all cars have a hardware built in. Sales figures for the Model 3 are evenly split between the three options, perhaps because each one has its place. The Standard Range Plus is a great all-round EV, more than capable of short journeys, long commutes and most other car activities. So where the Standard Range Plus is £40,490, the Long Range is £46,990. So you're getting quite a lot more extra range and speed for that extra money. At that price, the Long Range version is one of the most capable EVs on the market. But the natural choice for Speed Freaks is the performance model, which only has that little bit less range, although it is quite a lot more expensive. The extra £9,500 will take you to 60 in a slightly over a second quicker. As it's over £50,000, you don't get the £3,000 grant, which means that theoretically it's only £6,500 more expensive. But in reality, you are paying £9,500 more. The insurance groups of the Model 3 are also really high. The Standard Range Plus is in Group 48, and the other two models are in Group 50. The warranty is decent, but not up to Korean standards. The basic guarantee is four years and 50,000 miles. The battery warranty is eight years for 70% retention, and the actual miles you do is different. It's 100,000 miles um, for the Standard Range Plus, but 120,000 miles for the other two cars. Since all these prices are the same as the previous model, you are getting more car for your money. They've actually slightly changed the reversing camera, so instead of just seeing the rear view, you also get to the two side cameras as well. Tesla didn't need to improve the Model 3, but it went ahead and did it anyway. The new 2021 Tesla Model 3 is even better than the original. The ultra appearance tweaks will be welcome to most, and the interior is that little bit more classy. But the heat pump and the added range mean that the dual motor cars in particular are the most accomplished EVs in their class. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.